All right. Well, happy, gosh, what day is it? I'm losing track of time because my kids are off school. Happy Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, Anne and I are so excited to be with you guys tonight for those of you who can be on live. So thank you so much for taking time out of your night, the night before Valentine's to join us. Um, so hopefully you guys learn some stuff from us. We're definitely going to pour our hearts into what we share with you. And hopefully you can like implement that in your own life and then those you love um, as well. So we, Ann and I, are going to just really kick it off sharing a little bit about our stories. Ann, do you want to go first? Sure. Yeah, I'm happy to. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, Jamie and I go way back, actually, to grade school years. Um, and then we have just kind of reconnected through this uh, shared mutual passion of healthy living. And um, we each have sort of different focuses, but ones that really complement one another. So this was kind of a natural uh, fit for us to go ahead and, and do some collaborating here and, and bring you hopefully a lot of value um, tonight. So thanks again for joining us. Um, so a little bit of background on me. Um, I live in St. Louis. I um, am married. I've got three kiddos, 10, eight, and six. Um, so we are sort of like past the, um, the baby crazy phase, but into that phase where we're running all around town every single night of the week. So, um, but, uh, so I live in St. Louis. I actually found the faster way. So I'm a certified coach for the faster way to fat loss. Um, I found the faster way not too long ago. It was fall of 2018. And I started following a blogger who was talking about it quite a bit. And, and, and also just to preface, like I was never one, I've never done any diets. I've never done any programs, Whole30, Keto, any of that stuff. I have always prioritized health and wellness. I remember from a young age really wanting to choose healthy foods um, or what I thought was healthy foods. And I have always been active an athlete. And then again, in my adult life, just you know, prior to prioritizing exercise. Um, but when, when this blogger started talking about this program, The Faster Way to Fat Life, I was sort of really captured by it. And I couldn't put it down. It made a lot of sense to me. So I finally just bit the bullet and I tried it. And I am not joking when I say that very first week on the program, I, I felt like a new person. I had way this big, huge surge of energy. Um, I was sleeping better. I had more patience for my kids. My moods were stabilizing. Um, I kind of couldn't believe it. And then a few weeks later, I started noticing body composition changes, like finally a little bit more muscle tone, finally, you know, some, some problem areas that I, that I had that I wanted to kind of fix that I thought were just going to be there for life after kids, you know, um, for the rest of my life. And, um, so when the coaching opportunity came up, I sort of felt like I was sitting with this like magic potion that I felt like I needed to share with other people because I was feeling the best I had ever felt. And um, I felt like I needed to share that. So uh, one year ago, so this is, we have our coach recruitment coming up in a couple weeks and that this a year ago, February is when I became a coach for the Faster Way. Yay. And I, I launched my very first round in April and Jamie was um, a wonderful client of mine. And uh, so the rest is history. We've kind of been rocking and rolling ever since then. So. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So what caught my attention um, with Anne is that she was mentioning fasting. And so a little bit about my background is, um, while I grew up kind of a chronically sick kiddo, to be honest. So I was always looking just for things to be healthy. Well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a female, so I'm going to say I always wanted to look good as well, but mm -hmm. I struggled with my health. So I wanted to find things to be healthier because I was that croup baby. I was in the oxygen tent at one on an inhaler since I was five years old. I did six years of the allergy shots. By the age of 25, I had worked myself up to 20 or gosh, at 25, I was on eight prescription medications mostly for asthma and allergies. Um, I had an anxiety medicine that I was on as well. And of course I was a young female, not ready yet to get pregnant. So I was on a birth control. So later on in life, I learned like nine out of 10 women who are on hormone replacement are also on an anxiety or some kind of, you know, um, anxiety or, or depression kind of medicine. So I don't know if that's hundred percent my situation, but I was on a lot of medicines that had side effects that were, you know, playing a role uh, in my quality of life. So at 25, like I was 
a vitamin junkie. Like I was taking coral calcium and echinacea and a multivitamin. And I just was like seeking, but I was also doing some not so healthy things like hydroxy cut. And I had done Weight Watchers and I was never like a really heavy person by any means. But um, for me, like my biggest size was getting like close to a size 10. And now I average about a size four. And this isn't really about weight. This is about health. Um, and so I just, I wasn't healthy in the skin that I was in. And so I had a coworker who introduced me to a product called Juice Plus, uh, which is fruits and vegetables in a capsule. And she said she had been on it for two years. And after a year, she got off all her asthma and allergy medicines. And so at 25, that gave me a lot of hope because I knew that I wanted to have kids someday. And I worried about having all of those prescription drugs in my body and how that would affect me when I started to want to try to have a family. And I didn't really want any of those drugs to ever touch any of my baby's bloodstreams. And so she was in her early 50s and she was a huge mentor to me in, in my field. So I was an occupational therapist by trade and I was working in the nursing home setting. So it was a really, I love working with older people, but it was a challenging setting to be in that young and going every day to a place that most people don't want to end the rest of their life. And so I really grasped on in my 20s, like the importance of prevention and how I took care of myself in my 20s, my 30s, my 40s was going to be the kind of quality of life that I had then in my 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond. And so when she offered me the solution, like, and she had had results, you know, in taking more fruits and vegetables in, uh, in a capsule form and having to be, and being able to get off all her medications in a matter of a year, that was huge for me. So I wanted what she had, but she was not a distributor. Um, she just was a happy customer who had a profound story. And this, so my anniversary in March will be 17 years, which is super crazy. So, um, so I, it was not cool 17 years ago to Google juice plus or to put my credit card information online, just on their website. And so I think that life happens for a reason. And a f my sister actually gave me a call and was making fun of a nurse friend of hers. They'd been out at a bar one weekend and the nurse friend said to my sister, Jess, I think I found something that could help your asthma and your allergies. It's called juice plus. And so we're hearing it like on two separate ends of the state. So I call my sister's nurse friend really just to order the product. but. Within six months, I was completely off all of my asthma and allergy meds, just having started their fruit and vegetable blend. And it be, again, being in that profession of wanting to help people with their health, it really became unethical for me not to open my mouth and share it with those around me, especially my family, because my older two sisters suffered from the same kind of health you know, problems that I had. And then I immediately thought of my grandma with high blood pressure or diabetes and you know, all these other family members with medical problems that entered into my brain. So it was really easy for me to naturally share just like I would a good book or a good movie. And so I've really mastered over the last 17 years, like just the importance of knowing, and I'll share it with you guys a little bit later tonight, but micronutrition, but Anne's really hit, you know, on macronutrition and you really do need both. It's um, like gasoline and oil for a car. The car can't run on just one, like you need both. And so we're going to talk about how, you know, ways and strategies we've been able to like check that for ourselves and um, to support that. And you, hopefully you guys will find value in that tonight. Um, so I actually just wanted to share a couple of slides and let me get back to Anne mentioned fasting. And so last year I'd already really committed, you know, when New Year's rolls around for me at resolutions, like one year, I'm like, I really want to focus on meditating. And then last year was, I really want to find out, study a little bit more about this fasting thing. Um, and so I'd already started fasting, but not, but just on my own and not in a group setting. So when I saw Anne posting, I was like, tell me more about what this is that you're doing. And so once she shared with me like their whole system, I really got excited and jumped into her first round. And we'll talk more about that in just a little bit, but I'm going to share my screen, uh, with you guys. And we're just going to start right here. Um, our intention for tonight really is just to inspire you guys with healthy living and learn how you can make a couple simple changes that can make a dramatic difference in your life. And hopefully I can click on the next slide. There we go. And this is why um, I saw it in the nursing home setting. And I'm sure as Anne is working with people, she's hearing these stories as well. But I mean, the health outlook of our country isn't awesome. Um, one in four people will die of heart disease. It's the biggest killer. One in two women and one in three men will develop cancer in his or her lifetime. One in three will have diabetes by 2050. One in five children is obese. 
and I, this one really gets me as a mama, that our children are more harmed by poor diet than exposure to drugs, alcohol, and tobacco combined. So the things that Anna and I are going to be talking about tonight, like your kids are watching you and, and like we implement these things with our kids. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's definitely not a diet. Um, so this is the problem and this is why we're, we're here to share what we know. And what, some of the reasons as to why we're having those statistics is this, right? Like more than 50% of what we're eating is processed and it's got all of these names in it, right? That a lot of our grandparents <laughs> wouldn't have understood what these were. And then, you know, even some of the produce that we actually are eating, you know, just with farming practices and the soil content not being what it once was, um, you know, broccoli could lose 50 to 80% of its key nutrients before you even purchase it. From the lack of nutrients in the soil to them picking it before it was ripe, to the transportation system and it losing it all along the way, then sitting on the store shelves and then it sits in your shelf. So you can kind of get the picture um, that it, it's a challenge to get what we need to. So for tonight's sake, we're not, that's kind of the doom and gloom. Um, and health is multifaceted, we, but Ann and I really just are gonna lean into this eating real food for you guys tonight. Um, and she will probably touch on the exercise piece as well. Um, but we're gonna give you some hope because what we put in our mouths is one thing that we actually can control. So Ann, I'm gonna let you jump in with macros. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, good, well, yeah, that's a, it's a, those are kind of alarming statistics. And um, I think that the biggest thing like when I was considering the coaching opportunity I was kind of really starting to pay attention to what was happening around me and the conversations I was having with having with people and people kind of haphazardly saying I don't know I guess I'm going to try keto tomorrow I don't know I think for this month we're going to do whole 30 like kind of nobody knew what to do but everyone wanted to do something and so that was sort of my first like hint like, like okay you know, people don't know. They don't know what's in their foods. They don't know what those things are doing for them and their bodies. And I had just learned so much about this that I really truly felt kind of like you, Jamie, like it's sort of a moral obligation to get this education out there. And because um, once you have it, you have it. Um, and you can make decisions based on that education. So, um, so yeah, so the faster rate of fat loss um, is really just a a program designed to teach you how to properly fuel your body so that it can operate at its optimal level. Um, we teach your body to burn fat for fuel. It's very strategic. Um, but I think I'm a big believer that um, no matter what you subscribe to, whether it's the faster way, whether it's your own, you know, own program that you just are trying to live a healthy lifestyle, um, whether it's one of these other programs, it should absolutely always be rooted in whole food nutrition. Um, at least for 90% of that of the time, you know, to be choosing whole foods is really going to be, because you can hit certain goals, you can hit calorie goals, you can hit macronutrient goals by eating a lot of different things, but it's not going to serve you the same way that whole food nutrition is. So I wanted to talk a few minutes about that um, and what that really is going to mean for us. So I think the first step is really defining what whole food nutrition is. But because again, I think that we hear that a lot and maybe we think that is, but we don't know what that is. And like really what is whole food nutrition? Um, and so at the faster way, we categorize it um, by using a simple phrase, um, which kind of catches me off guard a little bit every time I hear it, but we categorize it as if a food comes from the ground or has a mother, it is considered a whole food. So if it the ground or has a mother, it is a whole food. So let's talk about that. Let's, let's break that down a little bit. So a food that comes from the ground is considered fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, um, beans are all, those are all wonderful sources of whole food nutrition plants um, that are wonderful things for us to be eating packed with micronutrients, which Jamie is going to touch on um, here in just a little bit. Um, and then we have the foods that are, that, that have a mother, uh, chicken, fish, a burger, steak, those are all great sources of um, whole foods that are going to, you know, have had a mother. Um, and within all of those foods, those foods are all made up of macronutrients. So what is a macronutrient? Our macronutrients are um, the, the large amount of nutrients that make up our food. So those are um, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. 
And it is so essential that we are getting enough of all three of those things. Um, we're really big believers that we do need all three. Like we, we don't limit any of them. We're very strategic and very intentional with how we have them. Um, and that's sort of part of the education piece um, at the faster way. But just to kind of break it down, um, when we talk about protein, for instance, protein is by far the one macronutrient that I consistently see, especially women, under consuming um and, and i was cert most certainly in that camp for sure um and it's hard you know it, it's hard and people think gosh i can't eat any more meat you know but there are really so many good sources of protein that even come from the ground too um but what protein is going to do for us is um really help protect and build lean muscle mass on our bodies um and when we talk about muscle mass um we aren't talking about big bodybuilders we are just talking about lean uh, muscle mass. And the more lean muscle mass we have on our bodies, the more calories we burn at rest. So I could have been sitting here all day today. Um, not gonna, I, I did get a workout in, but if I hadn't gotten a workout in, or if I was just sitting at my desk all day long, because I've spent years building um, more lean muscle mass on my body, I know that my metabolism is revved up. My calories are burning at a higher rate than, than say, someone who doesn't have a whole lot of muscle um, built up. So protein is going to be essential in protecting that muscle mass, um, which is so important to us. Um, so fats isn't so, and again, going back to protein, that those good sources of whole food protein sources are going to be your 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 um, chicken, lean proteins like salmon, fish, um, steak is a, is a great way to get it. Also, edamame, uh, hemp seeds. There are lots of different sources depending on what your you know your personal preference may be. Um, and so, okay, so fats. Fats are. I think we're kind of coming off. Um, an era where fat was like the F word, right? Fat was like the scary, like, you know, if you think back to like the 90s when we had like all the Snackwell's products and the low fat and the no fat items that we thought were so healthy um, and rightfully so. I mean, you know, it kind of had that, that connotation to it. Um, but really, that was, our, that was really, really kind of ramped up, which is really ironic. But re really what happened is we, we started consuming foods that had a lot of artificial sweeteners in it, a lot of additives, additives that then just kind of made us crave other foods. So we were just kind of, we kept, when you're eating a ton and ton and ton of low fat foods, eventually it's gonna, it's gonna, um, it's gonna creep up on you. So, um, so what fat will do is not only does it add like flavor and texture to our foods, but it's also gonna kind of like mute the absorption of carbohydrates into our body. So it kind of like slows that process. So the carbs aren't just like fully hitting and then, you know, we're, we have this zap of energy and then we, we die. It kind of just, it allows us to kind of absorb it at a, at a more moderate rate. Um, so fat is super important. But again, when we're talking about fats, we are talking about good, good fats. We're talking about um, avocado oils, coconut oils, avocados, nuts, nut butters, um, hemp seeds, again, have great fat in them. Uh, lots of different things that you can find that are really good for you fats that are packed again with those micronutrients that Jamie is going to touch on. Um, so don't be afraid of that fat. Um, I think it's super important that we are focusing on making sure we're getting enough of all three of these. Um, now, carbohydrates. So that is always the controversial one these days. Like, do we eat carbs? Do we not eat carbs? Um, we are super into carbs at the faster way. We love our carbs. Um, and carbs are really an energy source, just like fat. And I didn't mention that, but fat is a great energy source for us. It's, it's um, one of our key uh, pieces of energy um, at the faster way, really teaching our bodies how to burn fat for fuel. But carbohydrates are our number, are, it's our largest macronutrient. We need anywhere from like 40 to 50% of our day to be made up of carbohydrates. So to say we're gonna eliminate that is really tough. Um, it's tough in a lot of different ways. Um, but what happens when we eliminate carbohydrates, because it is such an essential big piece of our day, um, big piece of our energy, um, what happens is, and, and a lot of times in women, um, people don't realize we need the carbohydrates beyond what it, what it means from like a weight standpoint, we need them for our hormones. We need them to protect our hormone health, which is, I think, something that we probably don't talk enough about. Um, I, I was so not in touch with this prior to the faster way, but now 
I, and I've never gotten my hormones tested, but I am, I know that prior to the fast away, um, and I'm going to talk about this in a sec, but I was not fueling myself nearly enough and certainly limiting those carbohydrates and something was off. Um, you know, and, and eventually that's, what's going to happen. If we eliminate those carbohydrates from our diet, um, your hormones are going to shut down. Your thyroid is going to, is going to be out of whack. Your cortisol level is going to spike, which is that stress hormone that causes us to specifically store fat around our midsection. Um, so carbs are, are, are not only fun to eat, but they are also, uh, super essential to, um, um, to our hormone health as well. So carbs um, definitely get a bad rap, but we love our carbs um, at the faster way. Um, but we are strategic, again, about what we eat and how carbs are. So we're not talking about white bread and Twinkies. We are talking about fruit. Um, vegetables have great carbohydrates in them as well. Um, we're talking about beans, rice, oats, nut, or uh, quinoa. Those they're all awesome sources of carbohydrates that we should be implementing into our day each day. So, um, and really when we talk about all three of those macronutrients, um, one of the things that we do, because we know it's super essential to be getting enough of those foods, um, is we actually track those foods. So we use MyFitnessPal to make sure we get enough. So many times I, I've had people before say, that is so crazy. You guys actually track your foods? Like, you know, you guys are nuts. And I'm like, no, no, it's to make sure we're eating enough. Like most of the time I am telling my clients, keep eating, eat more, eat more, eat more, um, because that's what your body needs to fuel itself um, in the most efficient way. So I came from a spot prior to the faster way where I thought I knew the answer. I thought um, healthy living was eat, exercising a lot and eating frankly, quite little. Um, it was a calories in, calories out program. That's what I, that's, I mean, I knew the answer. I knew how this whole thing worked. And really what that got me was wrecked hormones, um, feeling very depleted, no energy, bad sleep. And that's when, like the second I started the fast way and I immediately, so I was probably, the second I joined the fast way, I had basically bumped up my calories, 500 calories per day. That is 3,500 calories over the course of a week that I was adding into my day. It was a little scary at first, I will tell you. Um, but it was only then that not only did I have that renewed energy and the better sleep and the mood stabilization, but a few weeks later is when I actually started to lean out and I could see the muscle tone that I, that I had been, you know, killing myself in the gym for, but never could see. So suddenly by actually adding food into my day was everything changing. And it was, believe me, the best, advice ever when my coach said to me, keep eating, keep going. It's like the best problem to have. Right. So, um, so, and I think a lot of people come from that, from that spot, um, of not really knowing and just thinking it's calories in calories out it's input versus output. Um, when really there's so much more that goes into it. Um, and just to kind of touch on again, the carbohydrates, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that and talk about, um, you know, again, needing those carbs, but also realizing that, you know, we hear a lot about the keto lifestyle and, 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 um, you know, people eliminating carbohydrates. We subscribe to carbs. We like our carbs. However, there are benefits to being in a ketosis state. And so what we like to do is make sure that we are capitalizing on all of that um, getting all the benefit without all the suffering of, of totally eliminating something from our diet. Um, so it's really kind of neat to know the science behind it. So what we do is we cycle our carbs. We have an intentional variation of how we eat our carbohydrates. So every week we have two days of a low carb day where we're fueling on a lot of fat because our body really likes to burn fat when it can't have the glycogen. Um, and then the rest of the days we are loading up on those carbohydrates. So what happens is our body's number one choice of fuel, as I mentioned before, is carbohydrates. Carbs come into our bodies, it stores as glycogen in our muscles, and then it's used as fuel. That's what our body kind of goes to for fuel. Um, well, if, if, if uh, glycogen is not present in our bodies, it wants to feed on fat. That is our body's second choice for fuel. So there is a benefit to that ketosis kind of state. So what we do over the course of two days, so if this is like your glycogen tank, over two days, we make sure that tank kind of goes all the way down to zero and our body's burning mad amounts of fat during those two days. 
Um, and then by Wednesday, when we're fueling up on those carbs again, our tank, our glycogen tank, our carb tank is way down here. So we start adding it up again. Okay, but it never, because we've, looked, we've, we've gotten to the bottom, it never overflows and stores as fat because we are constantly building it up and then we are also using it. So we are using it to use as energy to put into our strength workouts on those days so that we can build that lean muscle mass. So we are putting in the carbs and then we're using those carbs to, to and then the, those calories are burned all day long because we've done those strength workouts. Um, so being intentional about it without the suffering, because I don't know about you guys, but I am not interested in a life without fruit or a life without a glass of wine or a life without, you know, an indulgence here and there. And so it's, and I think that we all know that when we try those different programs where we eliminate things, unfortunately, when you start adding them back in, the weight comes back. And, and eventually you will start adding them in because it is frankly just not sustainable to eliminate anything from our diet. Um, and that's been kind of the cool thing is I have not given up one single thing at the faster way. I just have it with more intention. Um, and so carbs are certainly, they're certainly part of that. But I think, I think anytime you introduce a piece of deprivation is when you kind of get into some trouble. So again, what Jamie mentioned before, having that lifestyle piece of it and not a diet is really essential. So that's kind of a little bit on some whole food, some macro nutrition. Um, if you guys have any questions too, feel free to, to jump in or, or ask those. We'd love to hear them. Yeah, you can type them in the comment section below and we'll get to them at the end as well. But a couple of things about what Ann said that I just want to chime in about. I love the tracking piece because I feel like for sure, you can track, like Ann said, and you could do maybe not as quality of food and you could intake that and it would fit your macros, right? If it fits your macros. But um, I love, like, it's like a bank account. Like, it's you tracking your money and you're telling your money where to go instead of your money telling you where you can or can't go. I think the same thing is true with your calories, right? Like, you can tell your calories where to go or they're going to tell your body where to go, good or bad, right? So just having a little bit more control over it um, is, is really powerful. So I've, I've loved, um, the tracking piece, but I love having a coach, right? Like I think anything in life, business, um, even parenting, you know, it's great to have somebody who's walked before you. Oftentimes it's just our peer group, but to have somebody to like bounce stuff off of and let them know where you are and what's going on is so helpful. So mm -hmm. it was great. Even though I've worked with groups of people in the past 16 years, like it's just, I needed a coach and Anne was an awesome one to be able to have. Like she has the best um, ideas. Like I've done things like Whole30 multiple times in my life. And I told Anne, you know, it was just, I achieved it, but I just didn't eat. Like I was probably way undernourished because I didn't know what to eat. So I just didn't eat, but I did the Whole30 because I didn't eat those foods, but I wasn't eating a lot of foods. Um, and so that wasn't really healthy either. So it's really great to have somebody like Anne and all her other coaches who are like saying, get this from Trader Joe's or get this from Whole Foods. And like, they're giving you ideas all the time. Um, so my pantry looks different since I partnered with her and I'm grateful for that. Um, yeah, you did a great job hitting on all those other things. I'm going to jump into my, to micros really quick. I'm going to share my screen again um, with you guys, just because I think visuals are really important. And so this particular apple, the way it looks, like the, the right side that you guys see has had lemon juice squeezed on it. And you can do this in your own homes. It's pretty powerful. So because it's exposed to air, to oxygen, that left side is aging, right? And honestly, that's what's happening inside of our body. So we take in oxygen. We burn it for fuel and the byproduct is what we call oxidative stress and it creates date aging and disease in our bodies. And so we need a certain level of that occurring on a daily basis. I mean, we have to have oxygen. And if you think about it, when you exercise, you take, you're taking in more oxygen um, during that time frame, And so you're actually creating more oxidative stress, more free radicals than if you weren't exercising. It's like the one downside of exercising. Um, and so that's kind of, I was, I grew up in that age where like you worked out so you could eat whatever you want. When in fact, my truth was I need to be eating more fruits and vegetables because I was exercising so much. So um, the right side is the good news is that antioxidants, like the really only place they exist as Anne has already hit on is in fruits and vegetables. And so those protect our cells from this oxidative stress. So if you can imagine the more you intake on a daily basis, the, the, your, the, your cells are going to look more like the right side of this picture, which is what we want. Um, 
And so I love this quote that the news isn't that fruits and vegetables are good for you. It's that they're so good for you that they could save your life. Um, and this is really powerful. Like we need to be eating, you know, the World Health Organization says we need to be eating seven to 13 servings with the serving being about the size of your fist um, every day. And they say athletes actually need to eat even more, which now that I've you know, told you about intaking oxygen, it makes sense. Like especially elite athletes need to be eating like 16 to 18 servings. And I eat well, you guys, but there's no way I'm getting anywhere close to 16 to 18 servings and I CrossFit. Um, so I had to find a way um, to be able to get more of those micronutrients into my diet. And so why so many? It's because the produce is picked before it's vine ripened. It's just how the whole, you know, production works. But if you guys have a farmer's market or if you can garden and grow your own, that's going to always be your highest quality source of produce is a farmer's market or because it's local to you. So it hasn't went through this distribution model as much um, or growing your own. So it is transported thousands of miles. 90 percent of Americans don't eat enough servings. And typically what we eat um, is like the same stuff. We're very routine. Uh, we eat what we like and we're not getting like that full color variety. So the last point is we don't get enough variety from the rainbow of fruits and vegetables. And so because of that, a lot of people turn to um, isolated vitamin supplements. I was a vitamin junkie. Uh, so 70% of Americans are trying to fill gaps with a multivitamin, but a multivitamin has a few isolated nutrients. I, oh, I don't, I have this awesome visual. Um, and it's a centrum, you know, it's complete from A to zinc. So it has 26 nutrients. And if you guys know what perler beads are, um, there are these little beads that kids melt. But I like to take 26 of them and put them in a jar. But the whole big thing of perler beads is like 11,000 beads. That's how much nutrients is in each fruit or vegetable. And so if you can imagine, if you can get something that's a whole food based supplement or product, then you're going to be getting like thousands more nutrients than just the 26 that's in an isolated man made um, vitamin. And so research shows that vitamin supplements can do more harm than good. So this particular demonstration is like, like I just spoke of with the Centrum is on the left side, that's it. That's all that's in there. Like complete A to zinc, maybe 26 nutrients. On the right, is one of over 20 pages of ingredients of what is in an apple. And so you can see like there are thousands upon thousands of nutrients. They all work in synergy. Like you need each one and it tells your body what to do. Like the left side, your body will take what it needs, but all of it's in mega form. So what it doesn't need, then it like goes through your kidney and your liver and it creates more oxidative stress, um, which is bad. That's why it should, some of these things show more harm than good or neutral at best. So you want whole food. And so that's when I found Juice Plus 17 years ago, like it was a game changer for my health because it was the first time I was getting beets on a daily basis or mangoes or prunes, or I definitely didn't eat kale back then. Um, or the, the berries, like I didn't even know what a black currant or an elderberry or a lot of those berries were. You know, I knew grapes and blueberries. That was probably about it. Um, raspberries, I for sure knew that as well, but I wasn't eating them, right, on a daily basis. And so it's so cool to be able to get 30 plants in your diet on a daily basis. And especially on those low carb days that Ann mentioned, like this is awesome for me because I can't, like I would go over my macros if I tried to eat seven to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables, it wouldn't fit in my day. And so I love that there's this solution for a balance of that. Um, and then most recently we've added this omega blend. So it's a plant-based omega. They bypassed the fish and they went straight to the algae source, which is really awesome. And we know that omegas are shown to help heart health, brain health, joints, eyes, skin, like all of it. Um, so again, it's really cool to have a plant-based one where no fish are being harmed. Um, and that's and lastly, the product line that our company represents uh, is the Tower Garden. So if you want to control like what you're, you know, the quality of the produce you're eating, like these are such cool systems. It is the future of growing. It, it takes up 10% of the space and uses 10% of the water as conventional in-ground in -ground growing. Um, and it grows three times faster and the nutrient density is the same as the best in-ground gardening practices. So this has been a lot of fun for our family uh, and my kids to grow up. If you grow it, your kids are more likely to eat it. 
Um, and so this has been fun just to have Ethan go off and pick a cucumber and just, you know, chomp on it straight off the tower garden. And I know Bye. there's no chemicals on it and he can just eat away. So it's been a lot of fun for us. And lastly, so what Ann and I are talking about is this process on the top picture. One of the functions of fat is to enrobe toxins. And so a lot of times people will do these diets, these extreme things, and they'll shed the fat but they don't get rid of the toxins. They're not mindfully you know, trying to eliminate that. And so what happens is when they stop eating that eating lifestyle way, they rebound and oftentimes get bigger than they were before because they didn't get rid of the toxins and that fat needs to come back to protect them. And so when you do something like the faster way, and especially if you're getting more micronutrition like with Juice Plus, you can lose the fat and the toxins, and then be able to keep that weight off more effortlessly, which is amazing. And so that's something I personally experienced is that I've been able to, I'm far healthier and fitter today at 42 than I ever was in my 20s. Um, and what Ann's program helped me to do, um, you know, there's just some spots of getting your 40s and I started getting a little bit of love handles, even though I crossfitted and I did Juice Plus, like aesthetically, there just some, were some things I, I wasn't happy about. And it like nipped it in the butt pretty quick. I actually at Memorial Day um, hopped on like this in-body composition scanner and I was 18% body fat. I don't think I've ever been that low in my yeah. entire life. That's and awesome. I had been doing the faster way since, would you say March or April? April, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, April 1st, so you know, right away. So I'd only been doing it like a month, almost two months and was down to the lowest body percent I'd ever been. So. Yeah, I'm a big believer in it. So do you want to hit on fasting a little bit, Anne? Yeah, yeah sure. So um, we thought it would be a good idea to touch on fasting because uh, fasting is a huge buzzword right now, right? It is a very, very hot topic. Um, you see all the news outlets, all the news media, you know, it's, it's out there all over the place. You see Bella and Jenna doing their thing. You see all these different challenges happening out there. So it is um, a very hot topic. <clears throat> that being said, it's nothing new. So fasting has actually been around since the fifth century BC. So it has been around for a very long time, um, has a deep, deep uh, history and a lot of different roots and, and a lot of different reasons why people do fasting. Um, so first I want to, again, kind of touch on like, kind of just define what intermittent fasting is. Um, and, and one thing that it's not is a diet. Um, and I think that that's a really important distinction because I have had people come up to me and say, um, well, of course you lose weight. You don't eat. I mean, that's, that's just what it is, you know? And I'm like, no, 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 that's not what it is because, um, I'm not omitting any food. We aren't omitting any food. We are, it is an eating schedule. So we're just kind of moving some of that food into a shorter amount of time. That's all it is. So, uh, we eat all of our food within a shorter amount of time. So, um, you can find a lot of different schedules uh, out there. You can do a 12-12 fast where you're doing 12 hours of fasting, 12 hours of eating. Um, the most popular one and the one that we do at the fast rate is a 16-8. So every day for 16 hours of every day, we fast and we eat all of our food. So again, kind of tracking to make sure we're hitting those macro goals. We're hitting them all within eight hours, which can be challenging in the beginning because you might find you're not really hungry to eat some more um, but very soon as we wake up that metabolism that metabolism again um, pretty quickly your body does want that food um, so anyway so kind of a day in the life what it looks like for me is I will typically wrap up my feeding window around 8 p.m. Um, I will have sip you know have water throughout the evening I will fast all throughout my sleeping hours and then I will wake up in the morning I will have at least 16 ounces of water um, before I start in on any coffee. It's always a really good idea to start with water. Um, you're, you have just not had anything to drink theoretically for about eight hours, hopefully, if you can sleep for eight hours. Um, you know, so your body's a little bit depleted of water, a little bit dehydrated. So it's always a great idea to start off with water. Then you can go into your black coffee. I don't think I could do something that didn't allow for the coffee. So you can have the coffee um, and then you continue to drink the water. You can have coffee throughout your fasted state. And then for me, I typically break my fast around noon with a um, usually a sizable lunch. Um, I'll usually have like a, a pretty sizable snack, like a protein, um, some sort of protein 
smoothie bowl or shake or something. And then I'll have dinner that night and I'll close out my window again at 8 p.m. I mean, the, just the cycle, you know, moves all over again. Um, now, one thing to note, that's what works for me. Um, somebody who wakes up at four in the morning to work out and get some work in, but, and then they get the kids to school, someone who's up that early um, may not be able to make it till noon. So like your windows can change. It can be some people it might work better to have their feeding window from 10 to six, other people 11 to seven. It's totally up to you. Um, you do just wanna kind of keep it relatively consistent day over day so that you maintain that 16 hour fasting window. So, um, but lots of different schedules out there. Um, a lot of people do ask like, what can I have during, during my fast? Um, certainly water. We talked about the black coffee. We even account for like a little smidge of a non-dairy creamer in your coffee. Um, maybe a little bit of liquid stevia as well. Something that's under 50 calories just to if, if that usually won't break your fast, um, and I can always, you know, I always advise people um, on how to, how to manage that. But um, so lots of water, you can have black teas, you can have like a LaCroix or a Spinger, some sort of carbonated water is totally fine too. Um, so there are, there are things that you can have. We're not just fasting from everything um, during that time. So, um, and again, the key is to be eating enough during that eating window so that you can survive that fast the next day and it's not totally, totally miserable. Um, so let's talk a little bit about like why we fast and what really happens to our bodies when we do the intermittent fasting. Um, so a few different things happen. Um, so what fasting really allows for our bodies to do is just rest, take a break, just kind of chill. So um, if you think about it, if we are like if we are eating all day long, all, you know, starting right when we woke up, like I used to be, I would have breakfast by 7.30, I would have a snack by 10, I would be eating lunch at, at noon, I would then, you know, eat throughout the day and, and eat probably by not, you know, I was just eating little things all throughout the day. So my body was constantly, constantly working. My insides were never at rest, always digesting, always working. And um, if you think about that, like what if you were always on a treadmill? all day long, 24 hours a day, just always on a treadmill, you'd be tired, you'd be depleted, right? And so it's the same thing of what's happening to our, to the stuff inside of our bodies, all of our systems that are working on overdrive, they just need a, a chance to kind of rest. And so that's what it allows your body to do. So from like a physiological standpoint, um, when your body is at rest, it will actually allow your body to like slough off all of those dead and damaged red blood cells and make room to grow more new red blood cells, which are gonna make you feel so good and energized and ready to seize the day and motivated. That's kind of like, it makes you feel alive again. Um, so think about, you know, just giving your body that rest. So think about like, if you are on a major day of, of, of working that treadmill and then the next day you decide to, like, or if you've gone five days with hard workouts, the day you decide to rest, like how nice that is for your body. Same thing, when we give our insides a chance to just kind of rest, magic happens. Um, other benefits, of course, include, if you Google just the slightest bit, you will find tons of research on intermittent fasting linked to our brain health, which um, is a wonderful byproduct and admittedly not the reason why I joined or why I started intermittent fasting, but the reason, one of the reasons why I will always do intermittent fasting. Um, so if you, you, you'll, you'll notice that um, intermittent fasting is linked to Alzheimer's prevention, Parkinson's prevention. Um, Alzheimer's runs in my family. So this is like the easiest thing I can do every day to prevent like maybe one of the worst diseases I've seen. Um, so, you know, there's lots of different benefits to it. Now, the reason why we do it at the faster way to fat loss is to burn fat, of course. So um, here's what happens to our bodies. So our bodies take anywhere from like 10 to 12 hours to fully digest our food. So if I'm finished eating by 8 p.m. tonight, my body is done digesting its food by 8 a.m. Fully done, taking a break, you know, taking a load off. If I don't feed my body for just a few more hours, um, my body kind of starts to look around and say, well, I kind of need some fuel to kind of get going here. She's not putting, she's not feeding me anything. So it kind of has to look around inside and guess what it spies? Those fat stores that are just sitting on our body. And that's when, I always say, that's when the magic happens. That's when you can literally feel that fat melt away um, because it literally has nowhere else to go but to burn those fat stores that are just sitting there. 
So that is why it is the first, like such an essential and first uh, pillar of our program um, at the faster way. So it really is a way to kind of transition our bodies, the first step in transitioning our bodies into burning fat for fuel instead of just sugar. Um, and carbohydrates. So um, really big benefit there to it as well. Um, lots of people ask, like there's always questions around like, um, can I, like I'm, I'm breastfeeding, can I do that? Um, yes, absolutely, you can do that as you are breastfeeding. Um, people ask, uh, can I, so workouts, and that was my biggest thing. Before I start, I, that was my biggest hesitation in joining the Fast Array. I'm like, well, I do some pretty intense workouts and I like to play some competitive tennis in the mornings. And how is, if I don't eat, I'm going to be starving. Like I'm going to feel really depleted in my workouts. Um, and I just was encouraged to try it. And who would have thought like by far, I have way more energy to put into my workouts. I am lighter on my feet in my tennis. Um, I, in fact, if I have to work out in the afternoon after I've eaten, it always seems to be a heavier, more lethargic workout. So I, I actually much prefer to work out um, in a fasted state now, which is kind of interesting. Um, and I always find too, when people are nervous about it, I say, just try it. Because typically, if you are going to work out and you are feeling a little hungry, by the time you get maybe five or 10 minutes into that workout, you, you're not really, you're not hungry anymore. Your mind is, is distracted by the workout and you are just kind of in a rhythm. So it really, um, doesn't affect you all that much. And I think that you'll find that you actually have more energy um, to, to give to those workouts as well. So that's been a really um, unexpected win for me when it comes to fasting and, and my workouts as well. So um, yeah, so fasting, you guys, there's so many different benefits to it. Um, obviously, fat burn is going to be a key one for us here at the Faster Way. Um, so always an interesting topic though. And people always do have a lot of questions about it and are very intrigued by it, especially these days as it is kind of all over the place. Yeah. And I think you guys can, like Anne said, Google it. She's got lots of resources too, but there's so many like videos I've watched or podcasts I've listened to mm -hmm. about it with lots of different medical experts. And, um, yeah, it, it, it is healthy. Like, so it's cool that you can do something that you're not just trying to appeal to a vanity metric, you're actually making yourself healthier. So it's got a, a duality there that I really like. And something that I got hung up on real quick, you can jump back, but um, I, I like breakfast. And so like, so use breakfast as the first meal that you, that you break with, that's fine. Even though it's noon or 11, or maybe eat breakfast for dinner. We did that sometimes as kids growing up. But what I, kind of being in the medical profession, I was like, man, I thought breakfast was the most important meal of your day. And turns out that the cereal industry coined that famous phrase and that made me mad. Like, of course they did. So just be careful who you're listening to. We've been marketed to um, for a long time for people who don't have our health intentions at, you know, at their heart. So yeah. what were you gonna say? Yeah, no, and, and that's a great point. Yeah, I always tell people, who say that, you know, same thing with breakfast. Like, I don't want to give up breakfast and say, you don't have to, you know, just eat it a little bit later in your day, you know? Um, no, but what, and what I was going to say too, is I think that there is like a mindset to the fasting. So I think that um, some people view it as like a, oh, okay, every day you do that. And I look at it as every day I get to do this. Like I, I feel so fortunate to have found um, at a relatively young age, but um, something that I can implement for the rest of my life that will always benefit me. So I never really have ever looked at it like, and it gives me energy and it makes me feel good. And I, so I've never really looked at it as like a punishment or something that we have to suffer for these health goals. I actually really enjoy it. And when I, when I really think about if, if I am having a day where I'm struggling or I need to break my fast a little bit early, by all means do that. I mean, this is not like a, 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 a all or nothing scenario where you fast for the rest of your life or not at all. Um, you know, and, and every, every, every day helps, but I think also knowing what is occurring in my body. And that's why I'm so fascinated in like the science behind it all, because, um, just knowing how much fat I'm burning, just knowing that I'm doing something good for my internal organs and for my brain that keeps me going. That might get me through that next hour because it's like, well, you know, I am starting to get a little bit hungry, but 
I am doing something so, so good for me. And I know I'm about to eat a ton of food at, at noon. So, you know, I, I know I can always sort of rely on that and know that it is not something that um, we are eliminating. It's just we're de- something that we are, are, are delaying. So um, just, you me, know, kind of I- have that mind to it. I think as you are try- attempting it too, because there is a, an adjustment period too, right? Where you might need to ease into it and you start, maybe you fast till 9.30 one morning and hang out there for a couple of days and then you bump it up to 11 and you really ease into it um, because it, it might take a few days. De- I definitely remember a few hangry, mornings as I was just learning how to do it myself. Well, with the mindset piece, like I had started doing it, but I feel like I became a lot more consistent. And I don't know if I would have stuck with it had I not been a group of people. Like all of a sudden it just was like, they're all doing it. And then like sharing, right? Like they would share if they were having struggles or not. And you could see and coach them through that and give them grace. And yeah, it was cool. It's, a, it's like flexing a muscle, right? You've got to, you've got to build it. Because it is a major life switch for a lot of pe- people to your normal daily habits. But like the only thing that really is going to give you changes that you want is doing something very different probably than what you've been doing. And so it's really nice to do it in a community of people. Um, and I did want to just share with you guys too, as somebody who does intense workouts, you know, I, I usually work out at 830 in the morning and I usually don't break my fast until 11. And so like yesterday we did what was it, 250 wall balls and 350 double unders, like, and I was fine, like, my engine was awesome, like Ann said, like, I, you know, but obviously listen to your body, and if you feel like you need something, then, then do that, but I hear most people, especially women, and especially moms say, like, this is so easy, like, this naturally is so easy for me to do, like, it's like one less thing we have to worry about in the morning, like, ah, you know, so, Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're busy, like it's easy to do as well. So if you're jumping over to work and you're just diving in and if you start to get like those hunger pangs, which I don't get that anymore, but just drink water. Like I would just chug some water. Um, Mm -hmm. and usually in 10 minutes, like that hunger pain was gone. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to hit on with what you said, but give it a try. Yeah. It's been, it's been a fun journey. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Do any of you guys have questions? So feel free to unmute yourselves. I muted people so that we could kind of hear. So feel free to unmute yourself if you need um, or type it in the comment section because Ann and I are happy to answer questions for you tonight. And obviously you could reach out to us one-on-one if you have more questions as well. When is your next round starting? My next round starts on February 24th. So that is a week from this coming Monday. So in about, I don't know, 10 or 12 days or so. Yeah. So, um, and just if anyone's interested, like the logistics of how the program runs for me is, um, it's a six week round. You, you know, I teach you everything you need to know. So, you know, there's really no prep needed, you know, so it's, um, it's really just based in education. And, and I think that that is like such a valuable thing because once you have that education, you have it, you know, so, um, and, um, you know, I will also say that one thing that you mentioned earlier, Jamie, was um, the, like, the example we're setting for our kids. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, for me, I, I talk a lot about the ripple effect, you know, like by, for me, choosing health, and, I'm, and for you too, I know, um, it has been the best thing that I could have done for my entire family. Like everyone benefited in my family when I chose this for myself, um, just in terms of, of, of my overall demeanor and energy level and all of that, but also having the knowledge to change habits, you know, uh, has been something that we've all really benefited from. So I think it's, I think it's important because I, I do know that women have a tendency to put themselves last and to not choose things for themselves in favor of their kids or their husband or, or whoever. Um, and that's wonderful. But there are times when it's uh, just important that we choose ourselves. So a hundred percent. It's like the, um, when you're on the airplane, they say put your oxygen mask on first, right? Before you put your kids on. So right. you got to take care of you because you're not going to be around to take care of them if you don't. Right. Absolutely. So I so appreciate our time together. Ann and I could talk for hours every time. That I know, we- I know. This is great. So I said, we should just ha- come up with a whole series. <laughs> where yeah, we exactly. <laughs> oh, so yeah. thank you guys for who are on with us live. And um, you can get with Ann or I if you have more questions. And thank you for those who are watching the recording. We appreciate you too. Yeah, absolutely.
Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. Have a great night, everybody.